<laughs> getting better at this. Like I said, physical therapy being measured by how well you adjust your clapping. <laughs> So today, what I would like to do is we're going to do another music review because eh, that's the area that I looked, you know, because I want to kind of spread them out so you're not getting the same thing each and every time. And I want to shed light on smaller things that I don't see covered on YouTube. They're not getting the attention I feel they deserve. And I think a beautiful case in point is today's tape in question which comes from first of all Denzu artifacts hope i'm pronouncing that right there will be a lot of mispronunciations in this video just a heads up okay so i apologize in advance but we're gonna go for it anyways Denzu artifacts uh label run out of los angeles and if you would like even more information on the background let me plug once again Deft Esoterica. This is issue number three. So buy issue number three if you would like the background. You should buy all of them anyways. We've already covered that in my Deft Esoterica review, which I'll link to below. And I'll link to where you can actually purchase this off Bandcamp. However, comma, Denzu Artifacts. As Burroughs would say, I digress. I digress. I wish I I used to be able to do his accent pretty well. Anyways, Denzu Artifacts. It's a label that specializes in sounds pretentious as shit. Sound art. So when people, I just call it noise. But when people think of noise, they tend to think of harsh noise projects and contemporary noise wall. Buy one of those stickers from Deaf Desoterica while you're there. <laughs> I'm plugging the shit out of them. I need a sponsorship. <laughs> but anyways, Denzo Artifacts, uh, he releases batches of tapes, three at a time, four to five times a year. And I simply click follow on his band camp. And every time he sends out an email saying that there's a new batch of tapes coming out, I just grabbed them without even thinking about it. It's a beautiful thing to find those labels that you just trust the curatorial, did I pronounce that right? The curatorial acumen of the person running the label. And Dinzu Artifacts is a perfect example of this. When the tapes arrive, I actually leave them for a while and wait for the perfect morning to listen to each one. And I'll listen to one because it's listening that I like to be fully engaged with and present, not background noise, wallpaper, ambient, that type of thing. So I like to be totally focused on what I'm hearing because the beautiful thing about the works that he releases is it's a perfect chance for exploratory listening. And by what I what I mean by exploratory listening is while you're listening to the projects that he releases, your imagination runs wild. It's almost as if you're taking an inward journey. And this is why I truly believe the best thing you can do with your life is fill it with great works of art, be that writing, film, paintings, mythology, all of that. It feeds that inner exploration. So you're able to make those connections and it's a it's always going to be subjective and personal. But in work such as this, it just enriches the experience completely. So, as I said, follow Denzu Artifacts on Bandcamp and just I would recommend hitting buy on the on those each time he comes out with a batch. It's completely worth it. But the one that I was going to talk about today, and I think this is a beautiful example of his back catalog and and whole came from the last group that he released and here comes a screw up in the pronunciation is by jean baptiste geoffroy and leo suarez and i believe it's called le animal acclimate i'll put the uh name across the bottom so you get that completely right because i know i butchered the hell out of that anyways these are two improvisational percussionists who also use field recordings and modular synthesis to bring this work to you. Um, the one other thing I love about Denzo Artifacts, 
the design work that goes on these, I'll try to put the last few tapes up here. The design work is consistently incredible. It's just the photography that's used, the layout, very simple packaging, but the overall aesthetic makes for a compelling package each and every time. <clears throat> and this tape in particular was so good, it made me clean my ears. And that is not hyperbole. Kathleen will testify. She returned from Prospect Park. I was in laying on the bed on the side with a bottle of hydrogen peroxide and it was bubbling away my ears. So normally when I review music, a tape for you guys, I like to sit with it for quite a while. And then a few years ago, I bought Kathleen because she travels often for business. I bought her a pair of Grado headphones, not the super high end ones because yeah, I'm not made out of money, but they're probably the nicest headphones I've ever heard. So. I'll borrow her headphones, download the tape in question. I'll download that in a FLAC file, go in, lay on the bed, put on the headphones, just get lost, listen through it the first time just to get that emotional feeling, whatever, you know, just like I said, that exploratory journey. Second time, I'll pull out my notebook and take notes of individual tracks that I actually want to point out and see what's going on. I think close listening is the best way to approach work such as this. Now on this one, the beautiful thing about it was they did field recordings from, it's called, I believe the Loire River, one scan pronunciations, but they did uh, field recordings from there, a train platform, a swamp near Lake Ontario. So those field recordings and they use these field recordings extraordinarily well. A lot of times people use field recordings and they're very lazy in their use of field recordings. It just lies in the background and it doesn't really get manipulated that much. The field recordings on this tape are exquisitely blended in. And then you have Jean Baptiste and Leo Suarez who are both brilliant percussionists. And there's a lot of times when you're listening to this that you're trying to figure out, is that a field recording? Is that percussion? How is that manipulated? They have these very beautiful metallic drones that almost crush your ears, especially in the opener. I believe the opening track, once again, Peak Vert Impale, I don't know, across the bottom, here we go. That one kind of encapsulates everything that you're gonna see in the tape going forward. It's almost a great introduction because you have very caressing metallic drones going on with percussive elements. Not quite sure whether those are field recordings, whether they're actual instruments being played, how that all goes together. Your mind's just trying to put that together. And then you feel the monkey mind let go and you just kind of relax back into this auditory experience that's going on. <clears throat> Then moving forward, I'm not going to do a track by track breakdown. However, I will point out Intrusive, Exotic, and Standard, the sixth track on this album. Holy mother of God. It has these beautiful. It's almost like your ears are being massaged by these beautiful bass tones that they're using. And it just, it it's like. That feeling when somebody breathes on the back of your neck is just, oh, it's so good. Like, I immediately demanded Kathleen coming in and listen to this track because this is what headphones were made for. It's just incredibly beautiful. I could not believe how well it is. And they have some really beautiful tricks that they play on this album. Like, at one point, there's a field recording of a train going by, and it feels like it was recorded from under a bridge. I'm not quite sure how they did it. But the tape gets blown out or whatever they're recording on. It just gets overloaded with sound. It distorts. But they use that distortion from the field recording to blend into the sonic palette. It's just incredible how well they were able to do this. I was truly blown away. And by the time you get to the end of this tape, it's called Horse Saw. Oh, it's like I said... The first track was like a beautiful introduction. 
the last track encapsulates this entire experience that you've gone through. And it's just such a perfect pinpoint on it. The other thing that was going on that I found very interesting about this tape is you get tracks such as the fourth track. I'll just put it down because we're sick of me butchering stuff with the beautiful percussion elements that are going on in this, I almost wished the late David S. Ware was around to play over the top of it. It just, or even Yusef Latif, like it just has that quality that the interplay between those percussive elements and something like that, I think would be out of this world. And I've recently... Because I was thinking of that, I was looking for YouTube videos of David S. Ware, and I found a documentary about an hour long from 2000, which, if you live in New York, it's, a, it's always odd when you see the towers. <laughs> so it's old enough that you see the towers. But it's a beautiful documentary about David S. Ware and about the world of sound. And I'll link to that down below because everybody should watch that. But yeah, Denzu Artifacts, always a winner with them you never really have to worry about it and this tape in particular uh must have it's just so great like i said it made me clean my ears for god's sake it's that good and i know that he has sold out of the tapes you can still buy the digital but if you would like a tape i checked out leo suarez's personal website he still has copies of the tape available so i'll link that below as well uh Hopefully I haven't rambled on too much for you guys. And yeah, I just wanted to knock this out and get this out so you know about it because I know his latest batch of tapes just recently went up and that may still be available. So check out the Denzu Artifacts website and see whether that's still available because the pre-orders usually don't appear on his band yet. You're sneaky like that, my man. <laughs> also, make sure you picked up Death Esoterica as I talked about and yeah love you guys hope you had a beautiful holidays and i'll see you wednesday bye